Hello and welcome to making pretty UI in Godot. Every game you've ever played has some form of UI. You're always going to be working with screens, you have to go through menus, you need to see your inventory. So making good UI seems like a pretty big deal. Today I wanted to go over some of the tools that Godot provides that can make your UI experience a lot easier by leveraging control nodes. So let's go ahead and create a new scene by hitting this plus button right here, add a new scene. We're going to select user interface for our root node, which is going to open up with control. You're going to notice that my control node is already full rect. And full rect is just one of the anchor presets that we have. I can see that it takes the entire screen size shown by this blue line right here, which is project, project settings. You can see inside the window, this is my viewport width, viewport height. And so I want it to be full rect, meaning whatever I throw into this control node will now be placed in accordance to the size of the entire screen, no matter what that size is, because we want our game to be resizable. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a panel. Now this panel could be many different things, but for simplicity's sake, I want to use a texture rect. I find this to be very flexible and very good for when you know exactly what you want. You know what size it's going to be, you know what it's going to look like. I'm going to select control and then I'm going to hit control A. And then I'm going to start typing in texture rect. Texture rect. Now I'm going to create that. And you're going to see that this green indicates what anchor preset it has. So this is currently using this top left anchor preset. So when this opens up on screen, it will be lined up to this top left corner based on what the size of the screen is. So to make this easier to visualize, let's create something. I'm going to use an atlas texture. I'm going to expand that. And I'm going to throw in something cauldron to UI just so that we can see and have an easier time. And I'm going to go to edit region and I'm just going to grab this. Make sure that my boundaries are good. I'm grabbing all my pixels. Okay, so that looks good. And now we see something. It's this nice little chest that I have. And so if I were to run the scene, we're going to see this chest show up in this top left corner. Everything should be shown. So I'm going to run this. But first, I'm going to save this inside my prototype folder. You can save it wherever you need. I'm going to do um, pretty UI. Saving, saving. All right, so we got the chest exactly where we want it to be. And we're using this anchor preset top left right here. So if I were to resize this, my chest is always going to be in the top left corner, which is very good. That's what we want, right? But let's explore a couple different anchor presets. I'm going to click this. I'm going to hit this and do something centered. This is what I often use because I want my screen to be centered no matter what the size of the window is. So now I'm going to run it. Now you're going to see it's centered. And if I shrink the screen, it still remains centered. Perfect. Let's make sure we really understand what these green nodes are doing. So I'm going to go ahead and create one more texture rect inside this texture rect. Texture rect inception. So I'm going to click this, control A, and I'm going to create another texture rect. And this time I'm going to throw in 16. I'm going to do an atlas again. I'm going to do this really quick. Edit region, and I'm just going to grab step size 16, step size 16, grabbing this right here. Atlas, stretch mode, keep. So I'm going to resize this, make sure I'm grabbing exactly what this icon is, 16 by 16. And so this texture rect is a child of this first one right here, right? And you're going to be able to see the boundary of your green node whenever you click on the node. So this control node has an anchor preset full rect, and it's taking up the entire screen width and height. This texture rect, however, has an anchor preset of center right here, and it's taking the spacing of this parent node, which is the control node with the full rect. So it's centered right here. 
However, this texture rect right here is taking the spacing of this. And so it has a top left anchor preset, and it's going off of its parent, which is this texture rect that has the chest. So if I want to do bottom anchor, bottom right right here, it'll look like this. Otherwise, it'll look like this, or any of these positions, really. Hopefully, the gears are starting to turn at this point as you start to understand what you can use with this. I just want to give you one more tip, though, about positioning using these anchor presets. You might be saying, by pigeon, I don't want my texture, my button, my UI components to be on this corner specifically. Yeah, that's true. So how about I move this down over here, right? Imagine I wanted something right here, but not stuck to this panel in this position. So now I can use my arrow key and I can reposition this while still maintaining the anchor preset of this right here. Let's further build off of this concept. I'm going to go ahead and delete the texture rect like this. And I'm going to introduce a new node. This is going to be a VBox container. This one right here. And the VBox container is a node that I frequently use as well because it helps organize its children in a vertical order. You might think, oh, the vertical box is what you might see when you press escape while playing any modern game. It'll show you options, settings, gameplay hints, I don't know, but it'll often be in a vertical format. So it's very useful. You can see that the size of the VBox container right now is this right here. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use a couple prototype buttons here. I'm gonna select the VBox container. I'm gonna hit Control A, and I'm just gonna hit button like this. And I'm just gonna fill it with some text like test. And just to show you what this VBox container does, I'm going to duplicate this button by hitting Control D. And so you're going to see how the vertical box container, just on its own, is able to vertically manage its children. Button 1, button 2, button 3. Now we can use what we learned before, select the VBox container, and we can start using anchor presets to adjust where this test button, where this VBox container is. I know that my buttons don't look very good, but you can imagine how if you had a texture button instead of these buttons right here, if you had drawn up your assets, you can make this look really nice just by using some simple format such as control node into texture rect into VBox container. So before I jump into our next node, I'm gonna show you something about the VBox container and about a lot of these control nodes, actually. If you select the VBox container, you can go over to Theme Overrides. This is one of the settings that you want to check when you're, especially when you're working with these control nodes. And inside it, we've got this constant. It says just separation, but we know that this is a VBox, so it's talking about vertical separation here. And you can hit this button right here, or you can change this, and then you can start changing the spacing between your components. And I didn't explicitly say this before, but the reason why you want to use a VBox container is because it sizes and spaces out the children without you having to manage position of the individual elements that you have here. If you want it to take up space perfectly within a given space, then the VBox container will automatically manage the spacing for you. That is so invaluable because you don't have to manage, you don't have to position, the VBox does it for you, which is a very common theme of the control nodes. The control nodes will do it for you. So the next node I'm gonna bring up is because I am noticing a problem with my current setup. Do you guys see it? The issue that I have is the buttons, this VBox container, is controlling the spacing of the buttons, right? But it's actually overlapping with the part of the UI that I don't want there to be anything in. I want all my buttons, I want all my textures to be inside this beige looking area, not overlapping the chest or this brown area. So then what do I do? I'm gonna create a new node. It's gonna be a child of the texture rect, so I'm gonna Select the texture rect and I'm going to hit control A. 
And then I'm looking for a margin container. So it's going to look like this. And what I want to do with the margin container is I want to do full rect because I want the margin container to take the entire space of whatever the parent is, which is this texture rect right here. Okay, so now between the texture rect and the margin container, it doesn't look like the margin container is doing anything. That's because we have to throw the VBox or any children into the margin container. Now I'm going to reorder this tree. I'm going to select click and drag the VBox container and drop it into the margin container. And you're going to see it's going to do something like this now. The reason for this is because the margin container, it forces the VBox to take up all of the space of the margin container. <laughs> so we haven't done anything to our VBox. We haven't changed our buttons, but the spacing, the sizing has changed. So let's look at the margin container and let's see what we can do with it. Going over to the theme overrides by clicking the margin container first. I'm going to go to constants and I'm going to expose the different margin options that we have. And we're going to see exactly what this does as soon as we start toggling some of these things right here. And you're going to notice it does kind of break it. It does shoot out the boundaries a little bit because the buttons are very big as well. We don't want this to split itself away from the chest. I'm going to fix that in a bit. And then I'm going to go over to the VBox container. I'm going to change the separation like this. And that slightly brings it back, right? By going over to the button, and I'm going to go to Layout. I'm going to go to Custom Size. I'm first going to check what this sizing is. It says 99 and 31. So I'm going to say 99 here is what I want. And maybe like 15. I think that's the kind of button that I want to have. I'm going to delete these buttons, this one right here. I'm going to delete this button as well. And I'm going to duplicate this. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to my button, try to fix this up by going to theme overrides. I'm going to go to the font size and I'm going to shrink it maybe to about eight or six. Six looks pretty good to me. And I'm going to do this for the other ones as well. Theme overrides, font size to six and this one as well. I'm just going to delete this button and I'm going to select this right here and I'm going to hit control D. Okay, cool. So now we can go back to the VBox container. We can change up the separation like this, go over to the margin container and see how the margin is interacting with the VBox. So now when we have the margin container selected, it's going to show the full rect. So basically, we have to actually go between these two to see how the margins are actually being influenced. And what I want the margins to look like is I want it to take the space of this light beige color. So I'm going to have to adjust it a little bit. I'm going to go to the top. I'm going to do something like this using the button as my anchor point. Just going to go over here just to make sure that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to have to bring in the the left margin by one and then the right margin by one. So right margin up by one, left margin up by one. Looking at this, it didn't change anything. The reason for this, I think, is because we set the custom minimum right here. I'm going to reset this. I'm resetting them for all of these. And let's see what that does. Yep, now that we don't have a custom minimum size set, the VBox container and the margin container gets to dictate what the size is. So you can see the margin looks pretty good here. Looks like it's exactly what we want. And for the bottom, I'm going to increase the margin size. I think three pixels does it. I'm going to have to go back down take out one pixel, and now my margin container looks really good. And my buttons are spaced properly inside here. Applying these concepts, I am able to create UI like this. I'm able to make something like this. You can see horizontal box. You can see horizontal box container plus vertical box container. You can see grid container. 
There's definitely a margin container in here. I use this everywhere. And it really makes my life easier. It lets me control so much more of the UI and make it so much more beautiful. Hopefully you guys learned something. Let me know what you thought. Do you want me to go over more of my UI tips? Let me know. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.